It is a turbulent road for students in the metro area, many just praying to make it to college. I have to be the one who made a change. And along the way, tempted to give up. But with the help of the United Way, the GM Foundation, and the Metro Detroit community. People here really do care. These kids are being uplifted and given a chance to shine. People coming together, ensuring stories of success and survival as kids rise above against all odds. Hello and welcome to our Detroit 2020 special Against All Odds. I'm Carolyn Clifford. You know, during the last year, we've been invited inside the lives of kids in the metro area, striving to get through high school on most days, just struggling to figure out where to sleep and have a good meal. This journey started with the United Way's High School Turnaround Initiative. It's an effort to transform schools and ensure students stay and graduate. Since 2009, the GM Foundation linked arms with the United Way, pledging nearly $30 million over five years to help turn around seven Metro Detroit high schools. There have been many success stories, and over the next half hour, we will introduce you to some amazing kids and shine the spotlight on the people making a real impact on their lives. We're going to begin with Juwan Kemp's story. Juwan, now in college, traveled a turbulent road just to graduate from high school. Here's a look at his journey filled with perseverance and hope. Juwan Sonic Kemp is not your typical kid. Let's go, let's go, let's go before we miss this bus. He wakes up early and travels an hour by bus all right, I'll see you when you get out of school. To River Rouge High School. You see, after the death of his mom, he was pawned off to different family members. We had to stay as long as we could until, like, they got tired of us, I guess. His last stop, his grandfather's home. I don't think they wanted us to be there either. Uh -huh. I think he kicked my he, he kicked my brother out. And it was just me living there for a minute. Why did he kick and your brother out? Just being bad, yeah. make the wrong decisions. Decisions Juwan learned he could not afford to make. He was getting kicked out of school, doing like smoking weed, selling weed, going to jail, and I learned from it. You said that's not the way I want to go. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Juwan and his brother ended up in a vacant home in Detroit. Luckily, this woman, Taria Diaz Fernandez, was told about Juwan by her son. Blankets on the floor where he was um, sleeping. There was no food in the refrigerator. So Juwan was basically homeless. Yes. Taria decided he would be better off in her home, where this nurse has cared for at-risk youth before. You've taken in other boys. Yes. <laughs> At one time, it was, it was four um, young men here. And, and when they come home from college, including her son, DeMarco, this is where they all land. That's why she has recliners in her living room instead of a sofa, so they all have a place to sleep. Juwan plays football and has the nickname Sonic because he runs like a bolt of lightning. He's only 5'6". How you doing? Good, Good to meet you. Coach Pasula at Davenport University. College recruiters say a little too small for college ball, but Sonic would beg to differ. We watched as one college recruiter from Davenport talked to him about attending their school. Juwan is a 4.0 student and already has more than a dozen acceptance letters to college. He plans to major in finance, and his inspiration has nothing to do with the gridiron. What inside you keeps you working really hard? It's that so hard, in fact, that you can have a 4.0? My little sister. Your little sister? Tell me how. My goal was to make enough money to provide for her. Taria does it all. Mother, coach, nurse. But more importantly, she's given a young man with no hope a future. People always say it takes a village. I think it takes one person just to get started. You have to be the solution. 
And we wanted to catch up with Juwan, who's home for the holidays, staying with his uncle. He is maintaining a 4.0 in his freshman year of college at Virginia University of Lynchburg. He's a receiver on the football team and doing quite well. We went along with Juwan and his high school principal as he shopped for college supplies this fall. He's still hoping to reconnect with his baby sister. And his goal is to earn a degree in business so he can get a good job and take care of her in the future. We'll certainly be watching. Well, Southeast Michigan is known for its rich heritage and diverse cultures. Many families come here from other war-torn countries and choose to call Hamtramck home. And it certainly shows in the diversity of its high school. It's not always easy to fit in. Many unfamiliar with the American culture and language. But as you'll see, that feeling doesn't last very long. Welcome to Hamtramck High School. Welcome to Hamtramck High School, where district-wide, 18 different languages are spoken by students. The first thing that visitors notice is that we really represent the entire planet. They all have interesting stories. Principal Terrence George has to navigate the hallways like the United Nations. In one afternoon, we enrolled a family from Yemen, a family from Bangladesh, a student from Ethiopia, and a student from Angola in four hours. Wow. And I went home and I told my wife, I said, find me another place <laughs> where I could do all that uh, in one day. All right, very good, guys. As a principal, how do you make everyone feel welcome? Saying good morning, saying hi. Uh, when we have a student who doesn't speak English, uh, finding a way you can still communicate. And I think just making that contact, having the communication, letting them know that you notice them and that you pay attention to them, I think goes a long way. Uh, but I think because we're so diverse, uh, we've almost naturally learned how to do that. So students will translate for one another. For many students, the biggest challenges are poverty. Parents working seven days a week, 12 hours a day and language barriers. 17-year-old Nada al Qadiri was born and raised in Hamtramck, but her parents are from the Middle East. Her dad speaks Arabic, and her mom now speaks English. At first, her parents didn't want Nada to focus on education, but that all changed when her dad became ill. My mom dropped out of high school because it wasn't the cultural norm back then. But when things started getting tough at home, and my dad, my dad got sick, she had to go back to school. She had to do all of that. And I guess, like, she doesn't want me to go through all that, you know. Ross Krasnowski came from the Ukraine seven years ago, leaving home for an unknown future. And when I got to school, all I did is just sit there in class and just nod, you know, because, like, I had just had nothing. Was that scary for you? Oh, yeah. I was crying like a baby. I was like, my everything was there, you know, my school, my friends. In a roundtable discussion with her classmates, Nada gets emotional hearing the struggles of fellow students. A lot of us have after-school jobs. A lot of us are um, struggling about going to college. A lot of us don't even have the chance of going to college. All you have is high school, and you have to make the best of that. Like all of these students, Nada hopes to go to college. And while there will always be challenges from the way they dress to their cultural differences, Hamtramck will always be a part of them. And we do have a quick update on Nada al Qadiri, who was worried about not being able to go to college. She earned a full scholarship to Michigan State University, and we wish her all the luck in the world. Well, now to a story about another young girl who graduated from Hamtramck High. She didn't come from another country, but her challenges were just as daunting. Take a look at this beautiful teenage girl. Bright smile, pretty brown skin, and a personality that would brighten any room like a ray of sunshine. I first met Shanae Risby during a roundtable discussion here at Hamtramck High School. You can keep going and make something out of yourself. She talked about the extreme challenges students here face from poverty to homelessness, whether from another country or around the block. Was that um, challenging when you first walked in the door? Yeah, because I was kind of like, I didn't know how to approach the different type of people. Little did I know upon meeting Shanae, there was a dark cloud she had to fend off her entire life. The children are sometimes cruel, and they tease about appearance and her family, you know, you're, you're adopted, you're just, you know, you don't belong. 
The feeling of not belonging came from Shanae being given away at birth. Her mom, Cynthia Risby, literally gave her to Loretta and Steven Rodriguez. So we picked her up from the, straight from the hospital and from the crib to here. Shanae's mom has six children. Shanae and her sister landed with Steven and Loretta. They mean the world to me. Like, they're more than my grandma and grandpa. I actually call them mom and dad since they raised me my whole life and they helped me out with so much. Shanae's mom just came back into her life after 30 years of being in and out of prison. So you didn't resent her at all? I, when I first, I, yeah, when I first, I thought like, why, why did you give me up and stuff like that? But then that's when she like sat down and talked to me. Like she was going through things that she couldn't like keep none of her children. So I understood that at least she's trying. Drugs, crime, and bad decisions left her mom in a bad way, and it could have destroyed her little girl. At age 11, she and her sister were snatched from the Rodriguez home, the only family they knew, and placed in the foster care system. Did you feel lost? Yeah, I felt lost. I didn't know, like, because I got sent to Children Village, and it was like a whole bunch of other girls there, and I was just like a little girl. <laughs> compared to all them bigger girls. Shanae would cry herself to sleep each night, but knew there was something more for her to do, and that one day she would return to the only family she knew and loved. I just used to stay in the room by myself and just talk to myself like I'm going to be somebody. I'm not going to let anybody bring me down. I'm just going to be somebody my grandparents can be proud of. Hearing that brought me to tears. No, don't, don't cry. I know I'm not. Shanae is not only book smart, she's a basketball star. That, combined with her grades, has afforded her a full scholarship to Wayne County Community College to play b-ball. Only one of two students given basketball scholarships from Hamtramck High in more than 20 years. I'll be like the only person that's going to college throughout, like in my family, so that's, so, that's like a stepping stone for me. She's a beautiful kid. She's a beautiful kid. And despite every challenge from being given away at birth to homelessness, this child's spirit has remained undaunted. There's no excuse that I shouldn't walk the stage, no excuse that I shouldn't be here today. There's no excuses for that. Shanae's in college playing basketball and doing well. We have more to come in our Detroit 2020 Against All Odds special, focused, determined, and ready. Brittany G has had quite the journey, defying the odds. She set out to become the first in her family to go to college. Her story is coming up next. You know, thanks to the United Way's Turnaround Initiative, a total of 15 high schools are changing for the better. Osborne High is one of them. The blight and overall bad reputation put the school in the losing column, but thanks to the General Motors Foundation and a team of other organizations, the transformation is nothing short of amazing. Welcome to the east side of Detroit, home to Osborne High School. The rap here used to be pretty bad. Terrible students, terrible teachers, they don't really care about the education. And the surrounding environment, not much better. Blocks of rundown homes, dangerous streets, and hearts filled with despair and broken dreams. It was just like a desert. Nothing going on for the, nothing going on for the city of the area. But this summer, that dark imagery began to fade. Grab some tape. An army of General Motors volunteers ditched their suits and ties for these brightly colored T-shirts to bring hope and change. But why is this near and dear to your heart? It's near and dear to my heart because. Um, my belief is that if we don't change education in metropolitan Detroit, then nothing is going to change. Vivian Picard heads up the GM Foundation, which pledged nearly $30 million to turn around seven Detroit area high schools. With the help of the United Way, we've showcased three of them, Hamtramck, Cody, and River Rouge. Then last year, GM teamed up with Life Remodel and a long list of other companies to overhaul Cody High. Now they're back, this time at Osborne High. You can see over here the beautification over in this corner oh, here yeah. where they have really made a difference. This courtyard used to be filled with debris. 
Now it's gorgeous and inviting, all thanks to an idea by the GM Student Corps, started by the auto giant three years ago. It's where we go into 11 schools in Greater Detroit, one in Flint, one in Pontiac, and we hire 10 high school students, and we partner them with two to four GM retired executives. They work on a project for 10 weeks in the summer. This courtyard is one of them. It teaches hard work, discipline, and how to finish what you start. I toured the outside where everyone was using elbow grease to paint and make what's old new again. All this new equipment provided by GM or their suppliers to transform blight into beauty. And the inside is shaping up too. Now this is pretty cool what they've done here. They have repurposed this wood. This wood here is actually from the bleachers and this is the actual old gym floor. So they're taking a little bit of the old Osborne forward. And the GM impact is major. These GM core students from Cody are feeling more pride in their school and community and the momentum is catching like wildfire. People here really do care. And as you can tell, I mean, it's a lot of people here that really do care. <laughs> it's better. It'll make it better. It'll make school better. At the end of the 10-week program, students had the chance to show both the GM Executive Vice President Mark Royce and the company staff what they accomplished. It is certainly a proud moment to carry with them for the rest of their lives. Another high school feeling the love of this transformational initiative is Cody High School on the city's northwest side. Some incredibly dedicated people are refusing to let any student fall through the cracks despite their circumstances. Like Osborne, Cody High was once known for gangs, drugs and fear. But today, the outside is almost unrecognizable and the inside is even better. One student at Cody in particular is an example of success in the high school initiative, and it isn't easy. Many kids in Detroit are the first in their family to graduate from high school, and going to college can be like traveling to a foreign country. So we want to show you what it took for Brittany a G to make it to the next level. Have you heard the saying, it takes a village to raise a child? Well, the life of Brittany a G is what that saying is really all about. Brittany's had a tough life growing up. Um, lots of loss in her life. Um, she's had a lot of people who she can't depend on, bail on her last minute. You see, Brittany has seen more than her fair share of tragedy. Her dad murdered when she was nine. Her mom disappeared when she was a toddler. And her grandmother killed by a stray bullet, fired by a man fighting off a carjacker. Tragic, yes. But just the beginning of a girl's journey from hopeless to hopeful. This was Brittany a year ago. I gotta get out the neighborhood. Like, I feel like I have to be the one who made a change. I can't just sit around and wait on a handout. Despite the odds stacked against her, Brittany graduated this year, the first in her family to do so, and just started college at Alabama State. Originally with this school, we were trying to get kids just graduate from high school. Then it was, you know, let's get them ready to go to a career. Now we're saying, let's get them ready to go to college. Jonathan Matthews is yeah, Brittany's principal. Good morning. You know what school you're going to? But he is one of the villagers who is making the difference. It's not as heavy a lift when we're lifting together. The heavy lift is done by the Cody family, the teachers, counselors, the United Way, the GM Foundation, and Novi's Oak Point Church, which adopted Cody. It takes about 15 to 20 people that wrap themselves around five or six kids and make sure that if the kid needs an emergency, they got someone to call. One of those people is Melissa Meadows, a mentor from Oak Point, who helped make a rocky road to college for Brittany easier to navigate. Not everybody is supportive of her leaving Detroit. Um, she's the only one in her surrounding area who has graduated from high school. She was made fun of for getting on the bus every morning and going to school. Melissa met with Brittany weekly, invited her home, even made Brittany a promise about the 12 hour trek to Alabama State. I can take you. And she was like, what, you would? It's like, yeah, I was like, we would have to talk about details, but she was like, how would we get there? I was like, I don't know, we'd get in the car and drive there. Matthew says it's not because families in Detroit don't care. Many just don't have the means. I feel real grateful because I feel like she wasn't even a part of my family and she took me all the way to school. And I feel like somebody in my community really cared about me. For Melissa, a single mother of three who nearly died during a health scare, it's about making a difference. So I'm not the white person going in to save the little black girl's life. I'm you know, an adult who cares about 
a girl and just coming alongside her. And that care is making the difference in a girl, now a young woman ready to make her own mark. I feel like if I could just help one person, then I know that I accomplished my goals and my dreams. And once I do graduate from college and do get into my uh, major, I do want to come back to my city and help the children um, have hope. And Brittany hopes to one day become a social worker and wants to give back what she feels she was given in Detroit. Well, the work has just begun. Stay with us for a chance to learn how you can help transform the future of our community. We'll be right back. We are all born to learn. We take little steps and we celebrate victories. Sometimes we make messes or fall down, but we get back up. We're always learning. It takes thousands of little learning moments to be ready for kindergarten. Those moments between the bib and the backpack make all the difference for school readiness and lifelong success. You have the power to give your child a great start with United Way's Bib to Backpack Initiative. Take the first step at bibtobackpack.org. You know, thanks to the United Way and the GM Foundation, the high school graduation rate for the seven turnaround high schools in Metro Detroit is now nearly 80%. We sat down with the United Way's new president, Dr. Herman Gray, for his take on the initiative and beyond. And so the work that we're doing with the General Motors Foundation is really critical and has been highly successful. Uh, we've taken schools that were uh, known as dropout factories uh, with 30, 40 percent graduation rates, and we are now at 80 percent uh, graduation rates across these 15 schools. Yeah, you know, we're excited to uh, you know, talk about our bib to backpack program uh, because you know the United Way is looking at the full spectrum of uh, education for children from pre-K. Uh, before school starts to uh, high school graduation and even beyond. And so this Bib to Backpack program is to make sure that children in the first three to five years of life have all the advantages uh, that they can get. And you know the story doesn't end there. If you would like to help kids in similar situations get through high school and beyond, you certainly can. First, volunteer at any Detroit area high school, be a mentor to a kid, and you can always lend a hand by helping rebuild our local schools because there is always so much to do. And here's one even better. For every dollar that is donated to the United Way's Turnaround Initiative, the GM Foundation will match your donation dollar for dollar up to $500,000. You can find more info at wxyz.com slash against all odds. Finally, imagine living your life hiding in plain sight. For girls of the Muslim faith, the scarf and modest clothing are part of their religious beliefs that they hold dear. That means traditional activities like their high school prom or off limits. But thanks to some courageous girls and educators at Hamtramck High School, they've created something even more special. Every girl dreams of their senior prom. It definitely, definitely is something that, that little girls dream about when they're, you know, watching all of the fairy tale movies and, and want to have that feeling of being that perfect princess when they grow up and it's time for them. Prom is an extraordinary celebration that's been around since the late 1800s. It's all part of the high school experience, but... Not many girls in Hampton High School are allowed to attend the traditional prom with boys. And many of these girls, whose parents have come to America from other Middle Eastern countries, have to navigate both worlds. What's considered a rite of passage for some is strictly forbidden for others. There are certain rules to certain culture that you can go out with guys, you can show your hair and stuff. Why is it so important for you not to show your hair and to put a scarf over it? To, I mean, to our religion, it's like the hair is the most important or beautiful part of a female, you know, and that's the thing that is attracted to most of the boys, I think, that's why. But that is really significant for a Muslim female, you know. So traditional proms, where boys are allowed, are taboo. Many of these girls are not even allowed to date until they're much older. Fabia Ahmed and her sister used to dream of one day having their own prom. It was an emotional tug of war. We didn't really get to go out and have like a normal life, like go out and like 
hang out with friends, let loose, and like, you know, just have fun, you know? That, so she kind of felt it wasn't fair? Yeah. So her sister came up with the brilliant idea to start an all-girls prom, where no boys would be allowed. Three years ago, she asked her teacher, Autumn Paps, to help her make it happen. And the Prince's Prom Project was born. Once I got it, I thought, oh yeah, this is going to be awesome. Girls describe it as magical. You can let your hair down, you can wear dresses, and actually go and have fun, dance around, knowing there's no boys there. You have certain rules from your family, from education, I mean, from everywhere that you can do. But when you go there, you are like a free bird. You know, you can do anything. A bird doesn't have any limitation. The analogy comparing the princess prom to feeling free like a bird brought her teacher to tears. That's what I want. You know, that's what I want for them. I want them to have no cares. Like, I, I don't let them decorate the day before. I want them getting ready, feeling like the princesses that they are. Like with traditional proms, the girls shop for beautiful dresses, wear makeup, and let their hair down. The hall is decorated beautifully, and they even get to take home Hollywood swag bags. It's a sense of freedom for them. It's a night to remember dreams really do come true. All of us can go together and just be ourselves. It's just a night to have fun with your girls. Just beautiful. The Prince's Prom has grown from 60 young women the first year to 200 this year. A capacity crowd all paid for by fundraising dollars they raised. Well, to watch more Against All Odds success stories, you can find them at WXYZ.com slash Against All Odds. For the entire Detroit 2020 and Action News team, thank you so much for joining us and happy holidays.